welcome, one and all, to the Revolutionary Wrestling Podcast for our review of Full Gear, AEW's offering this month. Gentlemen, I am the devilishly handsome outlaw himself, your king of extreme, the Tom Brady of wrestling podcasting himself, Phil KOE, joined by my indomitable broadcasting partners, the reigning defending champion, Tony G. And the newest member of the Revolutionary Wrestling Podcast cast. Charles the Hammer Martell. So, gentlemen, we are going to get right into this. We all have our uh, drinks of choice. Everything from uh, beer, wine, and liquor. But I'm going to offer a, a bit of a taste test here of a new Dornfelder because... The source of my favorite type of wine is uh, going through a transition right now, and it's a very hard time for me. So it's we're not easy for Phil to talk about. So we're going to try this new red, this new sweet, see how it measures up to the old Schlenkhaus Dornfelder, which is a, a must, absolute must. So gentlemen, we'll see how uh, this one goes. Not bad. I like it. It's almost as good. It is. It's, I'd say I, it's a lot sweeter. It, it is. Hmm. I'm going to say on a scale of one to Schlinkhaus, I give it eight. Yeah. So, yes, until... I drink it. I can get more Schlinkhaus Dornfelder. This will be it's what possible. I... This is what I will survive on in the time being. But all that being said... We get right on to the event. Full gear, folks. Woo! And the winner of this match, loud and proud. No. Uh, oh, no. um, LAX? Almost. Um, XAL? Proficiently proudful. Way off. Um, I think, I think it's proud and powerful. I, no, I, that, that's just powerfully proudful. To, to quote Peter Sale, that's just for Cockton. It's yes, not a yes, very it it's not a very good tag team name. It, doesn't it strikes it fear into into the hearts of many, obviously. Well, it did the job tonight against the Young Bucks, or yes, just the Bucks, if you prefer. Uh, in a couple more years. In a couple be. more years. Um, interesting match. A uh, couple of really good spots, and who can forget Rock and Roll Express, Canadian Destroyer, and your favorite. Yeah, Ricky Let's doing see. the dive through the ropes. Let's <laughs> give the <laughs> Hall of Famer 70, 80-year-old man a dive through the ropes. Because every match needs He's that. Probably At least he pulled that off himself. Unlike the Canadian Destroyer where he just yeah. jumped the ropes and then what's-his-name did the rest of it. So yeah. I, I don't know if you're Santana or Ortiz. <laughs> one or the Joe. other. The one without the dreadlocks. I, I did like the weird four-man combo submission. It was different. I like the PNP kind of made the Bucks slow down a PNP, lot. Party and play? Close enough. Okay. And actually have a tag team match. But it still had the same problems that most AEW tag team matches have. No count out issued what at any the, point. Yeah, what and no seconds? legal man. Yeah. Jim Ross at one point, go, who's a legal man here? I have exactly. no idea. He, he has to say Jim that every Ross tag can't match. can't keep up. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he's, he's been doing Yeah, he's exactly. been doing it a lot longer than any of us. So Yeah. So it's a problem, but overall, you know, they did have a few good spots, but it was still fairly standard Young Bucks match. Yeah. So what do you give it, champ? Uh, you know, I'm sure a lot of people are gonna be more clamored over this match, but I, you know, it was good, serviceable two and a half. We doing out of five? Yep. yep. Alright. It was just a match, so I'm just gonna go middle of the road. I'm gonna use that as my base for the rest of the night. Two and a half middle of the road. I could take it or leave it either way. The best there. part was the old guy doing the half ass <laughs> Canadian story and the dive through road. He's an NWA tag team champion currently, I think. Still, kind of. Wow, way uh, to way to bury your entire tag team division there, you NWA. <laughs> Ouch. Um, Studio Rats. I have to agree. It's, it was a two and a half middle of the road match. It's not even the best Young Bucks match I've seen this year. No, so. no, no, not at all. But better than Paco Mega. Ouch. All right. 
And the winner of this match, shockingly, not Pac. Hangman Page with an impressive win. He needs to be put back into his winning ways. Um, we have potentially, you know, Hangman Page's stunt double sitting right here. You got that backwards, by the way. Very well. Very well put. My mistake, sir. We have the man that has Hangman Page as his stunt double there you in go. his many, many feature length films. Indeed. 27 of them are out on DVD. Find them now at your local retailer. Three, two, one. Charles the Hammer. It's the newest one. All right. It's a remake of the first, but yeah, it's still new. You know, so yeah, Hangman gets the W here, and it's a good thing because this proves since. Pack won the last meeting that AEW will not, I repeat, not succumb to 50 50 booking. Well, of course not. No, they no. are above that. Yes, they, are they are above, above it. that. Wins and losses mean something. And this proves it. This no 50 50 booking. Until they don't. And until they don't. Tony G. Sorry about that tangent. We kind of went on. You know how I get. I apologize. That's <laughs> uh, necessary. I'm, I'm quite familiar with bird walks. Well, I'm just trying not to, you know, new guy here. Don't want to bird walk much. Uh, we'll try to stay on course. All is well. But with a three-man panel, it's hard not to. But the match itself, I thought, I think this was better than their last meeting. I, I do. And this would actually be technically their third meeting had the first one happened at uh, Double or Nothing, but that got pushed back. This is their second big one-on-one -on -one match. Hangman gets the win in this one. I thought this was better than the last one. Yeah, I'll agree with you. And, of course, the first one that happened... They wanted the champion to lose on the debut. Hell no. You well, probably, he was champion I mean, of on, a Tony, Tony, crowd of 50 people. So. How, how pissed off would you be if the first time we met, first pay-per-view, first big event, I beat you? You would not be happy about that. So, of course, he'd pull out of that but, kind of pussy. But it's the champion of another organization. Champ's oh. champ. Hey, the, let's, let's go... Uh, yeah, ask Taz let's when go, he was the ECW World Taz. Champion about Taz. all those East matches West. he lost in the WWF, how much that title mattered in, in WWF. Well, Vince McMahon owned him, I mean, that then. No, so, before ECW folded, he came out as the champion with the belt because he did them a favor. But when Mike Awesome went to WCW, he had to drop the title to Taz. Taz still came out on WWE TV and lost a bunch of matches. So, it doesn't matter if you're champion of another organization. It does, to an extent. It's yeah, but it was a crowd of they, they did, people. But they did offer the right amount of money. Hey, much. Yeah, because hey, we all know Tony Khan no. just hurt sure the money. Destroyer is here causing fights. I'm so sorry. With Scars Guard, Tiger Back. And spats. Our our crowd is just very hyped up. For I this. know. They really are. Pandemonium here tonight, ladies and gentlemen. It is. It is. So, how do you rate it, guys? I, uh, and by the way, before I, I guess you we give have me a hard time for bird walking, Taz and the ECW title, huh? I had to make so, a comparison. Hey, hey, you gotta learn something each day. I just learned that, so it wasn't a bird walk. That was educational. That was the only time you yeah. ever had an, all three promotions come together. Before they actually got bought out. You only said two, but what was the third thing? Well, ECW, yeah, and WWE. WCW, oh, and okay. WWE, because right. Taz was a WWE employee, Awesome was a WCW employee, and the match happened in ECW. Look it up. Oh, yeah, it was crazy. Mike Awesome had just signed a WCW contract. I don't have to learn anything thing. tomorrow, because I just learned two things today. Ooh. Thanks, hey, thanks for freeing up my day tomorrow, Tony G. That's what I do. Yeah, yeah. So, Hammer, what do you give it? I'll give it three and a half. Three and a half. I, Champion. I, I mean... You know, I was actually at three and a half, and then I thought things really kind of came together nicely at the end. I'm going to go 3.75. I really enjoyed it. Wait, we can do point seven five point. We can do quarter stars? Yeah. This is last time he banned me from he doing that. So, he yeah. has a thing against it. I do not. You know what? I'm, as a new guy, I'm going to follow the guy with the belt sleeve. So... To you and your half or whole stars only, <laughs> I hate to rip off someone else's gimmick, but boom. Phil? So what do you ultimately give it then? If you're... Oh no, I'm still I'm sticking with 3.5, but... You give it 
3.75. I'm not going to be as generous with this. I'm going to mm-hmm. give it three stars. Wow. It was an okay what? match. It was serviceable, but I've seen much better out of everybody involved. Hmm. I thought this is one of their better match. matches. but I mean, so far on the card, best match. Oh, yeah, hands down. Yeah. Well, that too. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Don't give it away. Gosh. So, but folks. I, well, I, I have one question before you get your catchphrase in. <gasps> yeah, I had to cut you off beforehand. I don't want to interrupt it. The KOE Nation was just like, oh, oh. But see, now they'll enjoy it more that it's delayed. They got uh, the tease. Absence like, makes the heart grow fonder. Well, sure, we'll go with that. No. Spots. This had some. This had some pretty interesting or yeah, the big or back suplex spots. drop on the apron, and the brain buster into the chair. Yeah, that one was ah. horrible. Yeah. Plus, they're really throwing themselves at the you know against the guardrail. Yeah, somebody's going to get hurt yeah, in the audience. The audience, and they're throwing themselves. Yes, I know they're working it, but at the same time, those impacts. Yeah, that's sound that was rough. Yeah, I mean, they, 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 there's some, there's some, um, there's some whip on that. They basically got a sheet hanging over the metal, so it's not like there's a lot of give. Uh, yeah, I could be. Hangman's got some marks on his back. He's gonna be feeling that one in the morning. Oh yeah. So, oh, oh, I guess I know what's coming. So, <laughs> oh, that being said, join us, folks, and the winner of this match. Tony Blanchard! Wait, uh, was that no. was that wrong? Yeah, yes. Was, was I mean, that technically up? he won. I mean, he got like, himself over the most. He did. He got himself over more than Spears did. But John Spears wins over Jelly Nutella Janelle. I, I can't believe you, you said that. Because you're right. <laughs> like, the, like the Leo Rush thing I said earlier. We'll keep that an inside joke. Yep. Sorry, Leo. But, so, there was a match between Joey Janela and Sean Spears. That did happen. But did you know that Sean Spears is a spike pile driver with Tully Blanchard's help? Yep. Were that, you aware of that? I did. That's the uh, most memorable thing that happened. That adds at least two stars. Yeah, no. No. He should just be lucky, Janela. That is that he doesn't have a neck like Stone Cold, because otherwise, nah. talk about the worst schoolboy role. Of yeah, Janela hates his neck, head, hair, and back. back. Oh, I was happy to see that neck spot because thank God, it wasn't on his back. I At mean, least we know he's not paralyzed. Good to know. Well, so, yet. Yeah. It'll Sometimes happen. that stuff's like the cold. So, it sticks up on you. Yeah. I'm going months. to try as hard as I can to minimize the fact that Tully Blanchard did, in fact, help with the spike pile driver in my grading of this. Wait. That will be wait, tough. Wait, he did? I missed that. I did, you, what? did you not? <laughs> sir! I mean, I caught the old guy doing the Canadian story with the guy from the ropes, but I totally, yes. totally missed. Wow. My, my, my God. Yeah, this, that's, has been a, this has been a night for old school pile drivers. Um, Get to that. So, I'm going to let you two grade it first, and then I will try my hardest to have a non nostalgia induced rating. He hasn't gone first yet. No, he hasn't yet. It's your turn. Oh. Yes. Oh. Yes. Now you don't oh, get to base boy. your judgment off of ours. Three this and a half. So cool. Three and a half? Tony Blanchard, fuck you. Three and a half for Jelly Nutella Janella. <laughs> he had a four and a half star match with John Moxley, so... Yeah, because John Moxley was there. Oh, okay. Yes, John Moxley had a four star match, four and a half star match with some furniture and some thumbtacks. I will get to that. Joey Janella oh, right has up, not right. yet now, nor will he ever be involved in a four and a half star match. Without John Moxley. With somebody anybody. Of that caliber. With anybody. No. That was no, Moxley's not no. That was Moxley's boom handle moment. Don't take he that. He couldn't me. have a three and a half star match with a six year old who beat Kenny Omega. And she's an amazing worker. <laughs> yeah, she was, yeah, she was a great worker. I mean, God. Well, for being six, I could hope he could carry that. And I'm going to catch heat for this, too, but I think his match with Omega on AEW Dark sucked, so... 
I don't know what he's talking about. Watch us it, with your judgment, internet. So what do you guy knows what he's talking about. I agree. It sucked. Two stars. Two stars. Wait, for the one that sucked or this match? This match. Okay. Two stars. Wasn't good. I, it was all right. It was fine. It was serviceable. I can, can't disagree with you, Tony G. But I'm going to take this ability and this opportunity. 2.75. Three and a half. Give me a frickin' three. Yeah. Tony oh, Blanchard! Blanchard with the spike! So, SCU versus Private Party versus Lucha Brothers. Or bros, I guess, whatever. Bras. Bras. Lucha Bras. Bras. <laughs> Hispanic Bras. Okay. Anyway, I will say this. From their last match, you know, with the Young Bucks and the table spots and shit, they got a hell of a lot smoother. A lot lamer, though, in the spots. Y'all get hurt a little bit, like I, th like I said you would? <laughs> Obviousness. Second of all, what's with that damn squawking noise from Private Party? Uh... You got the coat and tape. <laughs> blah, that. Blondies. You got the coat and tails. It's fancy. I get it. I like it. You squawk. No. No. Beautiful moonsault, by the way. Let's shooting see. star press. Oh, yeah. My bad. My, my beautiful, bad. Shooting, beautiful yeah. shooting star. Shooting star press. Yeah. Still, you squawk. It's weird. Yeah. 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 Um, and then, SCU. I'm glad you guys won. It was a good match for y'all, in my opinion. And I really like to dig that finishing move we all did. But I, was, I was a little disappointed that we didn't get to see Celebrity Rehab. Oh... We need to hit pause real quick and pick up from right here. You guys, you guys got to see something. Trust me. We missed part of it. What? Let's. We got to go hit play. All right. I just remembered it. Told you. Yeah, that started out a little funky, but uh, Christopher Daniels wearing the Pentagon get up. I Jeez. thought it was gonna get really weird. It's a little odd. Excalibur knew his alias. <sighs> Well, he was Pentagon Jr., so okay. another Pentagon would obviously Pentagon III yeah, yeah, in yeah, Spanish, yeah. Pentagon Trace. It right. does flow at least. Sure. Better than some WWE storylines, and by some I mean most. Which what happened in Saudi Arabia? Let's not talk about that. Yeah. Let's talk about this <laughs> match. This match, Phil. What do you think about this match? Very smooth flowing match. Uh, private parties coming into their own. Um, Lucha Bros, they are what they are. They're just a great tag team. They do kind of the ooh and ah. And SCU's there to pull it all together and to actually bring it in into a cohesive and coherent wrestling match. Um, I'm going to give it three and a half. I think my biggest takeaway here was it took the addition of SCU in this match to make that match not the glorified gymnastics on a trampoline match that was Private Party versus Lucha Bros a couple weeks ago on Dynamite, which was it might as well have been on a trampoline because there, I don't I don't think there was an actual move. That's a little too dangerous. Well, it would have, it would have been perfect. It would have been perfect because I don't think any of them stayed on their feet longer than five, six seconds. So SCU was here to kind of pull it back into an actual wrestling match. Therefore, it was better, obviously. Uh, the right team won. It was good. Uh, three stars. You know, I'm going to three and a quarter stars. But I got to correct you. SCU was invited to this match. Private Party was at Well, they were. I'm just saying, in well, comparison yeah, yeah. Okay, to the okay. Private Party Lucha Brothers oh, okay, match, okay. adding them to the fray made it a wrestling match. God forbid. I also want to say one thing. Anyone else feel like the that the Lucha Bros stepped down their spots? Well, they well, had to. They, they, they had, had to. I mean, they were the smoother after their Bucks match. Yeah. They, they, they stepped them down. I mean, the... Jump over the top rope, up on the second rope, up yeah. on the top rope, do a little spinny flippy thing. Phoenix does oh, too much. Holy shit! It looks I great. I can never do that. This man, yeah. I've seen him do it seven and a half times. Easily. The half time was against a short person, so, you Easily. know, he was just like there. But, 
I could not. I'm a rare luchador. Tony G, he broke a finger the last time he did it. Very serious injury. He's out for a year and a half. You know, you gotta get that shit right, otherwise it doesn't heal right. I would never try because, I mean, I'd be the opposite of Christopher Walken right there if I tried that shit. So, so yeah. Three uh, match on all, three and a quarter stars. Yeah, I don't know. I, yeah, Lucha Brothers, they, they really do a little bit more jumpy stuff than they need to. Phoenix especially. But, yeah, they, they really pulled it back in, had a nice match. But yeah, three stars mm-hmm. is the max I can go here. And the winner of this match, Rio. So, um, aren't we missing somebody? Yeah, the hammer. Uh, you know, this match was so essential that the hammer just couldn't miss it. Yep. And so he decided uh, he had to go take care of something real quick. There you go. Yeah. So this was. Uh, I'll just be honest. This was Rio's best match yet. She's had a couple of pretty good showings, but she's on and off. I haven't been impressed with her yet, at all. And she's, I think she's green, I think she misses a lot of spots, but she was on point here. But I think that's largely due to the fact that Sakura's a pro, clearly, and they have a very detailed past working together. So, of course, they were on point together. I, th- I think it'll be a lot more telling in Rio's next singles match. Can she sustain putting together a match of this quality? I doubt it. I hope I'm wrong. We'll see. Um, I'm going to be honest. I gave it two stars. I'm going to be a little more generous. I'm going to say 2.75. Yeah. I, I, I was surprised at how well Riho was able to let Sakura ring general her through that. Yes. I mean, it was... As you said, a general basically bottle feeding the rookie. There you go. I mean, there's no better way to describe that. No. Um, other than that, uh, a lot of stiff spots in this one. Yep. And there wasn't any hoo ha, any nonsense. It was just a straight wrestling match. A uh, couple of spots where, when you're doing all this high flying flip stuff, there's going to be moments where people are like, oh crap, where am I supposed to be? Yeah. It happened once or twice, but it was really a good match. I'm sticking with two stars. Okay, very well. So, Riho, well done, miss. Cheers. And the winner of this match, and still AEW champion, celebrating with a little bit of bubbly, Chris Jericho. Oh, hey, the hammer, you're back. Uh, you said champion, so I show up. Well, glad to see your affairs are in order, sir. Um, so, Cody Rhodes, Jericho, very good match. Um, I'm going to let you two grade it first because um, I was thoroughly impressed with this match. It had all of the great elements. It had realism. You didn't know that the lines were blurred in a lot of places. Um, the conclusion was perfect. Go ahead. Blah, blah, blah. Kiss it three times. I'll let you two give your ratings. You, you sure? Cause that Go was ahead. About two minutes worth of you letting us give our ratings that you had to explain. Well, I like to set the stage. Uh, oh, set the stage. Okay. First of all... The stage is yours. No, first of all, did I not tell you? Not that, that chair spot with... Uh, page oh yeah not the worst one tonight yeah this was this was nastier oh god i've done that off a bike before i'm still pretty thankfully but that hurts yeah gonna have to see how what the extent of that face plant into the ramp oh and uh yeah. mjf i believe you said not too long ago on talk is jericho and i'm fairly accurate with this quote i will never wrestle cody rhodes well, that pretty much he is confirmed my he would. Yeah, no shit. I saw that <laughs> then. Like, I love it. It's about time. What? Great. But, I mean... Now, thank you for not doing the cliché turning on him to cost him the match type thing. That yeah, kind of you know, did. V- VKM. No, he, he didn't like hit him with a brass Right, wrestler. right. He didn't Paul Heyman to see him punk him with a ladder. Right. Right. And I will say, congratulations to you, MJF, that you are so over that a heel had to do another heel turn. <laughs> so I, 
I congratulate you, sir. Uh, what do you rate this? I'm going to give it four and a half because of the turn, the quality of the match. The, you got to give a you got to give an extra bonus, or I am at least for the fact that he took that not even a face plant, an eyebrow, an eyebrow plant <laughs> into the ramp and went as long as he did, as coherently smoothly as he did. Better than Pack Omega the first time they met, which was crap. But I mean, overall, there's that. There's the, the mom. The mom spots. She, she, you know, she really got into it. That should have uh, been a DQ. Yes. Yeah, so should the belt thing. So really, Jericho Four. lost twice. Um, Still retained. Yes, <laughs> because you can't change hands on DQ. But. Whether or not it was a plant, I think it was an actual fan. Ah, the drink throw at the end. I think that was a plant. You have not heard about that shit since I'm, the 70s or the 80s. But Classic plant spot. Uh, yes and no. With, with every plant, how quickly does security get there? Because they were ready. The camera was there. Okay, so my take on this. Oh, but I, I got to mention, four and a half, that might be... The highest rated match you have rated on the wrestling Revolution yeah, Wrestling saying, Podcast yeah. to date. Yeah. Mm. Four and a half. Tony, what do you give that? My thoughts on this one. I think Jericho and Cody have a very good chemistry. And it's unfortunate that this is probably going to be the only match in this series for now. Because I'd say Cody's probably going to head off in a direction with MJF. Jericho will feud with somebody else. Has Jer to heal. Yeah, Cody's probably out for a few weeks at least. Uh, God, it was a really fun match. There's a lot of good elements here. They had a great chemistry. Uh, both MJF and Hager did great stuff as corner guys. A lot of good spots. The referee, Aubrey, she's on point throughout this whole thing. They told a story. A lot to like here. I thought it was really well done. I, but I really wanted just a little more at the end. I, I, I like How so? I like the towel throw in, but I felt like there could have been a little more leading up to it. I felt like it kind of just kind of... It kind of came out of nowhere. It didn't come out of nowhere, but it was a little lackluster when it happened. I wanted a little bit more oomph. Hey, at least he wasn't like Rocky in Rocky IV and throw the towel in after he was dead. Mm. I'll give you that. So, but overall, I I really liked the match. I thought it was really good. I will go four stars. I will say four. I think that's also the highest rating I remember you giving. No, uh, I've given just year, slightly it, higher. Well, okay, since I've been on the show, sorry. <laughs> and you were only here for like a tenth of the first one, so. Eh. This one is tough. This is tough, gentlemen. Because I was going to, for the first time ever... Brace, brace yourself. Hey, break my rule. There's of, no totally Blanchard, remember I that. know. I was going to break my rule of not giving quarter stars. And the, both of you are pretty close to right in that it's a little better than a four-star match. But it's not quite a four-and-a-half-star match. And so I was going to break my rule, but then I remembered Cody Rhodes hit the bionic elbow and got color. I'm sorry, four and a half star match. So, my rule lives another day. Yeah. So, Cody Rhodes just keeps banging out the hits. Weird how the executive VP does that. I, who would ever thought? It's almost like he learned exactly from his dad or something. Well, and Eric Bischoff. I mean, he did let or or Vince or Russo, who did let David Arquette Stop! Arquette Stop! Arquette ah! Arquette My ears! Ouch! I mean, it could have been a lot worse. You made it worse! And the winner of the Lights Out main event, John Moxley. Gentlemen, this was quite the match. Uh, it had everything and more, as JR would be prone to say. They pulled out all the stops.
I'm surprised there wasn't actually a kitchen sink in this one. Or stops. Signs. Yes, that had to be pulled out. Um, gentlemen, this was uh, one of the better hardcore rules matches I've seen in quite some time. You're right. John Moxley carried Kenny Omega to that great match. I mean, with his crappy ass performance previously versus Pac, he carried him to this four and a half, dare I say, five star performance. Four and a half to five stars. Tony, what do you give it? Hmm. God, I'm still debating, honestly. Um, there is a lot going on here. This was, by all accounts, a massive, massive spot fest. There wasn't much wrestling to be seen here, but this touched a very soft spot, I'm sure, for myself and you, probably, because this resembled very, very much a... Easy duck, easy duck, easy duck. I would go a step farther. This was... Uh, Jimmy Havoc. Jimmy Havoc. Jimmy ah, Havoc. Bye on you! This resembled, by all accounts, a backyard wrestling match. So, man. Yeah, the spots in this one were very backyard wrestling, if I dare say. Uh, you know, I thought it was good for what it was. It's graded on a different scale, though. It's not, uh, it's not a wrestling match. It was a death match. It was a hardcore match. It was... A lights-out match, if you will. So, on that scale, I will grade it four stars. Four stars. Very conservative from Tony G. Honestly... That's um, high. I thought that was high. Uh, no. This was a match where they really did pull out all the stops. There was really no second place they could have gone with this match and for me it's a conflict just much like the hammer between four and a half and five stars um i'm very torn on this one for me if it wasn't for the glass spots i think i, 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 I would go i would go five but i don't like that the glass spots on the glass yeah, I'm thinking four and a half because of that. And I am the opposite of you, sir. I thought the glass added to it. Him crawling across the glass in the sharpshooter I thought was marvelous. So I'm going to have to go on the opposite yeah, yes. end of it. And, and I am going to give this a five-star possible match of the year contention. Tony G, Mr. Champion, when did Dave Meltzer get here? You know what's funny? I haven't broken five stars, and sir, you shut your goddamn whore mouth. You know First what, of all, you know what's I've never funny? been paid. They just, you know, I'm so good. They don't. I know they pay, pay you. <laughs> you know what's funny about the Dave Meltzer reference there? Dave didn't like this match. Dave also likes likes Donkey Dick, from what I hear. You know, his his secrets that he gets, I get the same secrets from those people. I mean, you know, they do call him Donkey Dick Dave for a reason, so... Dirt Sheet Dave, you know. All right, right and and cut! So, anyways... <laughs> so, um, yeah, Dave didn't love this match, which surprised me because it's got his favorite wrestler of all time in it, and he's yeah. supported everything AEW does, Yeah. but he said it was too violent and went too far. What? That's... That was his they, problem? They did yep. bleed crawling across their impact on the glass. Oh they bled more God. with the barbed wire than they did. The, I'm, I'm sorry. sorry. No. But Dave, here I am. Like Now, Tony, far be it for me to channel the spirit of Jim Cornette. But oh. here I'm going to... Well, God fucking forbid, it's a goddamn wrestling match. It's supposed to be a little violent. Who would ever think there'd be some violence in a wrestling match? All right. All right, that's kind of my first. I was like, violence in a wrestling match? Who would ever think such a thing? But right. yeah, I'm sorry, Dave's wrong. Five stars. This is what you. I, this is what is expected of a hardcore match in 2019. This is the basically this is the trendsetter, if you will, the yeah. industry standard. Mm. Uh, this harkens back to days of XPW, CZW. 
but ECW, I don't That was better than anything CZW or XPW ever put on in the entirety of I, their I existence. I doubt that. Why? They probably used real glass. Because uh, Omega and Moxley have the slightest idea of this weird little thing that they used quite a bit in this match called psychology. Right, but... No, Moxley used a bunch of that. Omega just did his typical They did psychology. Yes. Stanson. In between spots, because yeah, they, they didn't did, wrestle here. They, you've heard of a super. They were using the psychology of wrestling in the context of a hardcore match. They use the psychology of wrestling in a spot fest. This, hardcore hey, match. super kick party, spot fest party. That's what this was. It was a great hardcore spot fest. Yes, it was a great hardcore match. No psychology, but so, Moxley this carried one, Omega. The glass was fake. That was that really ruined it. Honestly, what? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Hammer, fact- I refuse to believe that something that happened inside of a wrestling ring is fake, sir. I don't know what they even say to you. Technically, Moxley was mostly in the wrestling ring when he got hit to the head with the barbed wire covered broom. That was that was that was legit. Yeah. That was brutal. That was bloody. Hey, so that boy, yeah, Moxley took some some bloody. Bloody well, spots. they both did, but um, I don't rate it amongst the greatest wrestling matches of the year. I grade it as probably the best hardcore match of the year. It's on a different scale. That is for a me. Yeah. fair way to look at it. And when we do at the end of the year review the best matches of the year, that will have to be considered. Because um, as of right now, do I mean, we do we, worst match of the year as well. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. Oh yeah, I got my oh, pick. Oh yeah, um, we we would. It's you. Yeah. Wow, wow. Um, Man, we'll save that for the year in review. Um, oh, that being said, AEW Full Gear. It was an event that started kind of slow. And as the night progressed, each match just got better and better and better, and it crescendoed. Um, you had Cody. Did you see the fact that he delivered a bionic elbow, Tony? Yes, Phil. Did you, were you aware he got color? Your nostalgia is in full effect. Were you aware he got color? I was. Tully Blanchard. Uh, oh, God. Tully Blanchard again. Yes, Tully Blanchard again. Tully Blanchard helped with a spike pile driver to win the match. I'm pretty sure that's how it happened. It, I don't it's care. It's a miracle he didn't blow out his quad like Kevin Nash. And Dean Malenko and Arn Was Anderson there. And, and Great Muda. We're there. And the Rock and Roll Express. We're there. Yep. Nostalgia uh, for everyone. Uh, yes. Except done for right. the crowd that had no clue you know, who you know, half of actually, them were. Speaking of the Rock and Roll Express, you know what's bad? The worst and best spa of the night. Involved the Rock and Roll Express. <laughs> that might be fair. That's very true and fair. The, it was so bad, it was good against spots. <laughs> no, no, the worst one was the guy giving the himself a Canadian destroyer, yeah. and then the best one was the geriatric doing a dive, yeah. Tope so- con Suicido, or however the hell you say that. Yeah. At what? 102? Uh, I was going to say 98. 98. Okay, fine. We'll settle in the middle at 87, but whatever. So, the long story short, folks. And it's a long one. It was an event that was all over the place, but in a good way. Um, AEW continues to deliver. Um, delivering match of the year potential here. I mean, we've got at least two matches that are potentially better than Seth versus AJ. I mean, <laughs> I like to get this kid's goat. It's great. Um... <laughs> That's going to be a part of our ma- end of the year review. Um, what will be the match of the year? That's in the contention. There's many others. I mean, we will have to see. You will have to see, folks. Join us here at the Revolutionary Wrestling Podcast for all the happenings of the world of wrestling. Until then, I am the devilishly handsome outlaw himself. Your King of Extreme, Phil KOE, the Tom Brady of wrestling podcasting himself, the Superman of all podcasting in general himself, your King of Extreme, Phil KOE, signing off and handing it off to my indomitable broadcast partners, 
the one and only Tony G. Thanks for joining us. Like, share, subscribe. And Charles the Hammer Martell. You know you love me. We love them. Subscribe, like, click. Catch you later, folks.